Before we begin today, I'd like to thank everyone for helping the channel get to 30,000 subs. With that milestone, I think it's time to open up a Patreon. There are four tiers, but the only difference is how much you want to donate. There's a members-only Discord, exclusive streams, and work-in-progress updates. And even if you're not a member, you can follow the Patreon for free to get channel updates. With that out of the way, let's hop to it. Getting up comes easy to us. Our muscles revitalized after our rest. We had to sleep without blow high, but regardless, we are well rested and ready to begin our scouting mission. It's 9.30 at night on June 3rd, and with our med kit, armor, and arsenal well prepared, we're ready to go. We'll start by finishing off our sloppy joes. They're cold and a little soggy, but there's still going to be good energy for what's ahead. Let's make sure we have a good cudgel with us. And let's go ahead and drop some of this junk we've picked up. Spot a new zombie dead at the nail board traps. We'll just finish it off so it can't cause any trouble. The coast looks clear. We got a look at this electric car the other night, and just as we thought, it works. We bump into the ambulance trying to get out of the parking lot. It's been a while since we last drove, and it can take some getting used to. Here's our speedometer showing both our target speed and how fast we're actually going. The azimuth, here, shows where we're pointing the steering wheel, but it's easier to track with the cursor that pops up over here. We can speed up or slow down with the forward and back keys, and we can pass time with the period or tab key, which will move the car forward or backward according to its current speed. It's a little hard to get used to, but it definitely feels good once you know what you're doing. Generally, the trick is just to go slow. We fumble with the controls until one headlight comes on. The other bulb must be broken. Because it's dark and the dome lights aren't on, the zombies shouldn't be able to see us. Suddenly, we pull up too close alongside a zombie and it hurls itself into our driver's side door. We swerve to get away from it and bump into a second one, sending it sprawling toward the curb. We speed up to 12 miles per hour in an attempt to get away from the scene of the accident. The zombies are left wondering what the hell just happened. We have to slow down, however, when a squirrel decides to stand in the middle of the parking lot and stare at us instead of getting out of the way. We nervously check our rearview mirror to make sure the undead aren't catching up. Oh, we can just get out right here. We go to execute a three-point turn and wind up hitting the semi-truck's wing mirror. Our car still looks okay. We weave around a few wrecked and burned out cars, passing a military APC as we go. During the riots, these things were bad news. The army was supposed to be helping people, but half the time they just show up and start shooting. Dark shapes move through the moonlit streets. The APC looks abandoned, but maybe there's something inside? 
Empty. Just the glow of the instrument panel. Something slams up against the side of the vehicle as we climb out. Have we already been spotted? We ready our bow and take a look around, spotting the emaciated remains of a dog, now animated by the same force that twisted the townspeople into ghouls. Unlike the former humans, it looks pretty quick. We put an arrow in the dog, realizing that its speed makes it a high priority target, but the banging only gets louder. A small group of the dead, attracted by one zombie's assault on the APC, have begun mindlessly imitating it, attacking the thing even though there's nobody inside. They haven't spotted us, but they're making a ton of noise. It's shocking how quickly the situation deteriorates. We realize that we're out of our element now. The mall's maze of corridors and metal doors had been our home for more than a week, and we've become very good at controlling our enemies in that space. Out here, they could come from anywhere. And even though we have the advantage in the dark, it won't do us much good once we get surrounded. So out comes the cudgel. Hoping to quiet things down quickly, we decide to just wade into melee with our cudgel. Many of these zombies used to be children, and they're kind of hard to shoot thanks to their size. One of them is badly decayed, like it's been dead for days if not longer. It seems weaker than the others, but the sight of it dashes any hope we had that time might take care of the zombies for us. It seems to be getting around just fine despite the fact that it's in an advanced state of decomposition. Another zombie wandered into the APC. We step up to deal with it, but are stunned by what we see. A zombie like any other, except that its facial features and skull have been devastated. It's unclear what caused the damage, but between the scraps of flesh, you can see that its face and brain are gone, though its ears remain intact. Most of this zombie's head is missing, but it's still going. We figured an injury like this might prevent reanimation, but here we are. It's a good thing we've been smashing them so thoroughly. We scurry around and collect our arrows. Sure. The external fuel tanks are damaged, but other than that it looks like it might be usable. We'll keep that in mind. up the street, still holding on to the irrational hope that at some point we'll see lights and friendly faces. But house after house sits silent and dark, and the dead still prowl the streets. More newspapers. Evacuation alert. FEMA officials said today, do not try to defend your property in towns. Please retreat to the nearest evacuation center outside of town and await extraction to a safe facility. Military officials require non-hostile civilians to be removed from potential hot sites for ongoing violence. When the evacuation order is over, you will be able to return to your homes. Well, we just passed an APC, so where are the soldiers? We come upon a pair of zombies standing over a corpse that's been completely blown to shreds. The big one manages to grab us, and we have to fight our way free before we can drop it. The little one had a baseball bat. That'll come in handy. Our heart sinks. Wandering around the pool, we spot a zombie dressed in military combat gear. There's another corpse here in bloody chunks, and we realize what we're looking at. 
It's been shot to pieces with a high caliber rifle. We already know our bow isn't going to work on that soldier zombie. We put the child zombie down and ready our baseball bat. Its gear is tough, but not totally impervious. And while our bat isn't doing a ton of damage, it's still knocking the zombie all over the place. Eventually, it collapses in the shallow water with a splash. We give the gear a once over. Most of it's in awful shape, and the treatment we just gave it didn't help, but it did have an M4. Oh wow, it had a lot of stuff. Two-way radio, combat knife, some MRE food. The ballistic vest had a lot of attachments, but it's in such terrible shape that we can't really justify taking it. There were a couple of useful books on that child zombie. So the combat knife is absolutely incredible. It does 4 bash for some reason, plus 26 pierce. It has rapid strike and only costs 82 moves per attack. If you have a compatible martial art with a stun technique, this thing is easily one of the best weapons in the game. I'm certain it'll get nerfed to hell someday, but it's completely overpowered right now. For us, however, it's only pretty good. We don't know any martial arts besides brawling, and we aren't really skilled with piercing weapons. Let's give it a try. The blade shreds through rotten flesh and spatters putrid blood all over the pavement, but it doesn't stop the zombies quickly enough to keep them from hitting back, and unlike our blunt weapons, this doesn't really slow them down either. This military Humvee is in terrible shape. It looks like it got hit by a bomb or something, but up top there's still a machine gun mounted to it. We decide to try taking on a pair of zombies with our knife. Unfortunately, they both get a hold of us and start biting before we can finish them off. There's a body in the driveway here. It almost looks human, but something's really off about it. It has claw-tipped hands and what look like a pair of horns. Was this a zombie? We take another bite trying to get fancy with our knife. We'll have to disinfect that. This isn't really a good time to be playing around. Learning how to use knives is a good idea, but we're deep in enemy territory and it could cost us our life. For now, we'll switch back to the bat. In fact, we should be using the bow. We spot something in the intersection. This recently risen body moves quickly darting its head back and forth and gnawing at its hands. The zombie's filled with a nervous energy that we haven't seen in the others, and it seems to have better control over its body. We decide to put it down before it spots us. One of the zombies must have heard the noise of our bow. It starts trying to climb over the wrecked cars in the middle of the intersection, alerting several more. Suddenly, more shapes come running out of the darkness. This is bad. We dash to the south, trying to use the beetle to cut them off. As we do, we spot a zombie dog on the other side of the street, hemming us in. We drop the bow and go for our cudgel. It's lighter than the bat and should be easier to swing. The dog goes down quickly, but the runner jumps on us. We whirl around to deal with it, stunning it with a series of quick strikes and dropping it just as the second one catches up. We're in so much pain that we're seeing stars, so we pop an oxycodone while we stop to rest.
limping back to the intersection, we take the chance to smash the bodies and collect our arrows. One of the zombie runners had a Tokarev TT-33. This is an antique Russian semi-automatic pistol, famous for its durability, accuracy, and uncomfortable grip angle. It was chambered for 762 by 25 millimeters due to the popularity of the C96 pistol among Russian revolutionaries. This gun is pretty bad. It's a bit weaker than 9 millimeter, and it only holds 8 rounds, and we're not likely to find a lot of this ammunition. If 7.62 sounds familiar, it's because it's a very common cartridge diameter. There are many types of 7.62. There's the 7.62-39, famously used in the AK-47. There's 7.62x54, 53, and 57 MMR for the Mosin Nagant. And there's 7.62 NATO, which is what the United States uses for a lot of sniper rifles and medium machine guns. They're all very different cartridges. 7.62x25mm is just a lightweight pistol round. Interesting if you like Soviet gear, but it's pretty outdated, and its performance is nothing to write home about. These here are hot loads, which means they've got a bit more power than they might coming out of a factory in 1930, but they still don't beat 9mm. We patrol the street, trying to clear out the immediate area. The bathroom window behind this house has been left open, so we just let ourselves in. Soap, 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 soap. Now we can finally do laundry. We can snag a few books while we're here. The basement is open. We spot a little figure in the dark and hesitate briefly. Well, we're committed now. We wait until the last possible second and then put an arrow in its heart. We pull the arrow out of the child zombie and send it into the adult. A zombie dog jumps out of the dark as we advance. We put it down just as it closes into attack. And not a moment later, another zombie staggers forward. Was the whole family hiding down here? It seems quiet now, so we can take a look around. There's a hunting knife in a box over here. Hunting knives are one of the best butchery tools there is. They're not great as weapons, but this is a really handy thing to have. Binoculars. Perfect. These will extend our visual range on the world map so we'll be able to see more of our surroundings when we go scouting around. We step back outside, feeling depressed. We found lots of things, but we were hoping to find people. Living people. At least we can salvage the ammo belt from this machine gun. The M240 is a medium machine gun. Machine guns generally come in three categories, light, medium, and heavy. LMGs can be operated by one person and even carried around and fired by a single gunner, but for a medium machine gun, you typically want to mount it, as the weapon is heavy and fires high-powered rifle rounds. In this case, 7.62x51. Yep, that's 7.62 NATO, not the many Soviet 7.62s we discussed earlier. We don't have the know-how to get this gun off the turret mount, and even if we did, it's in terrible condition, but maybe we'll find something that uses this ammo eventually. yet another bug out bag. This time it has over a hundred rounds in it, as well as two full MREs, drinks, and a Kevlar vest. We don't need the AR-15 or the Beretta, but that ammo will work just fine in our guns. We quickly take off our gear and put on the vest before re-equipping ourselves. 
The Kevlar vest fits underneath our clothes and will add some pretty decent protection to our torso. This zombie also had a perfectly intact and clean plate carrier vest. That's a bulky outer vest made of Kevlar which you can insert ballistic plates into. This is an absolutely ridiculous amount of loot for one zombie. This guy doesn't look military either. He must have been one of those militia types who kept getting into gunfights with the police. Of course this is all way too much to carry, but luckily we drove here. We can just haul this stuff up the street and sling it into our trunk. We decide we should check out the house where we spotted that soldier zombie. Maybe the rest of their team is around here, or we can find out what happened to them at least. Yet another brainless zombie inside. Our bat takes care of it quickly. There are more corpses in here with their heads blown off. Some of them are still able to get up and walk around. We don't find any more soldiers, but we think we can piece together what happened. The military must have gotten into a fight with one of those militia groups here. That one we found certainly had enough firepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the army. They must have blown up the Humvee somehow and ambushed these guys, and then... What, the military blew everyone's heads off? But the bodies upstairs didn't have any gear. CSI is hard. We head into the basement and discover a recording studio. Oh cool! It looks like we have a couple of books down here. Batter Up and What's a Transistor. There are lots of cables and other things that we don't presently have a use for. We will grab a violin and acoustic guitar though. Okay. There's a book here about hand-loading ammunition. Some canned food. Another book on essential oil distillation. We'll just haul this stuff out.
There's a bunch of food in the fridge. The power's out, but some of it's still good. We don't really need any of it, though. We'll eat this yogurt. There's a garbage bag here. We do want one of those. And we can grab these batteries. actually go out the front door. Trying to drag all this stuff through the water would ruin some of it. Alright, let's get our things and get out of here. Our electric car is just to the south. Luckily we memorized its location, so we get a map marker. We load everything into the back along with a case and our M4. It seems clear now that driving across Minot in a car is not going to be viable. The streets are choked with the undead and god knows what else, and the wrecked cars and debris everywhere make it difficult to navigate. A motorcycle could weave through a lot more easily, but we'd attract a ton of attention with all the noise. The car starts up and brings us back to the weird parking lot entrance. This will be easier if we just get out and fight the zombie here. So cars have this weird doubling effect when you turn. This is a little awkward, but basically it's there so that when your car turns diagonally, it doesn't leave gaps in the diagonal spaces that the zombies can walk through. It looks very weird, but rest assured it's much better than the monsters phasing through your car and attacking you while you're driving. I bet there's a way the tile sets could do this more elegantly. We square up and start busting heads. This works out a lot better with the bat. Now the way is clear. We can just grab this motorcycle and walk it out of the way. There are a few more dead along the north side. We have to get out and deal with them so they don't trash our car. We're badly injured and it's slowing us down. This will be easier with our bow.
There we go. We're in a hurry, overconfident, and rushing. We realize as we square up to the cop that our arms are like wet noodles and we're out of breath. With the last burst of strength, we dive into the car and throw the engine into reverse. Clear of danger, we can catch our breath. Okay, let's get back in there. We strike quickly with the bat, bludgeoning the zombie cop until it's down. We can retrieve our bow now. There are still a few arrows stuck in this zombie over here. Looks like the west side is clear. That's one more down. Go ahead and drink this American Pale Ale. Please do not drive drunk in real life. We should be able to bring the car around now. There's a little bump as the wheels go over a dead zombie. The soft hum of the engine goes quiet as we park next to the planter. We unload everything from the back and start hauling it inside. It'll take a while, but that's okay. We need some time to think. Going through the city's not a good option, but the river might be a lot safer. 
We don't know much about boats, but we do know that people used to go kayaking and stuff around here, so it can't be that hard. But we can't go blind. We're going to need to scout out a path to the river. So first off, we'll take this garbage bag. You can do a couple of things with these. They're good loot bags, you can make them into raincoats, and you can use them for storage in your base. We're going to disassemble this one to give us a plastic sheet. This large plastic sheet can be laid on the ground and used as a crafting surface. It can be used for butchery, we can eat food off of it, or we can sit on it. The thing barely takes up any space in our inventory, so it's handy to just have around. We've also just received a ridiculous amount of ammunition. Most of it is just stuff we found on zombies. We've used up the majority of the hunting store ammo, but look how much we still have. We'll go ahead and check out all these new books. The loot's going to have to be sorted too. Let's dump it all here. Now we'll go through the painstaking process of scanning all of our new books with the e-ink tablet PC. We'll use a marker to write our name on it too. We don't want it getting mixed up with the other ones we come across. There we go, Mel's eBooks. This is going to take a while. Let's bandage ourselves up first. It winds up being more than eight hours before we finished photographing every page of every book. Now we can use an empty SD memory card to copy all the books to our smartphone. We don't want to use the smartphone to read them, because we don't have a way to recharge it yet. But having all the recipes stored on there will make them always available to us at no cost so long as the phone is nearby. That's a tip from a user in the comments, and it's pretty handy.
have some water before bed and uh, we're gonna go get blow high. Let's just put the computer down and make sure we're armed. We're not really expecting trouble, but you never know. Hey, the zombie had one of our arrows stuck in it. We must have hit it a while ago and then lost track of it. We passed the boats again. This kayak is probably the only one we're going to be able to get out the door, so we should start thinking about what we could do with it. Here's another arrow. Blow high, where are you? Here he is, outside the mattress store. We got blow high here. Let's make sure the doors are all shut. And then we can turn in for the night. Kirk was right. Mano is gone. It doesn't look like the military response was at all effective either. Either they rolled out too late, or the problem was too widespread for them to help anyone. Spread thin and fighting against zombies and civilians alike, they seem to have suffered the same fate as everyone else. It's an awful, stomach-churning thought. Everyone's gone, and in their place, the world is overrun with the undead. Despair begins to creep in. We can't think about it. The only solution is to focus on what's ahead of us. Today, we sleep. Tonight, we scout out the river. After that, we'll take things as they come, one step at a time. <laughs> 